Hi everyone, I'm Rosemary and I'm back here again doing another video for, um, for YouTube for kits that I have given out at a library and they will follow this to, um, to finish the piece. This is the birdhouse. Now this piece is quite different than a lot of the other pieces that I have posted. I usually buy all of my bisque from Gare and it's manufactured uh, out of the country, out of the United States. And it's beautiful, it's nice, but it just doesn't have the detail of pieces that are poured. Uh, this is a clay magic mold, I believe. And uh, it's an old mold that I've had for a very long time and I pour these myself. So I pour them, I clean them and I fire them. And the detail is much better than on the pieces that come from overseas. So this is a beautiful piece, has a lot of detail and it's great for dry brushing. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be dry brushing this entire piece. I think the only thing that's really painted on here is maybe the gold and the little ladybug. But everything else is dry brush and the dots. The dots are done with the back end of a brush. Um, so I went ahead and I base coated with the brown. So you can use any brown that you have. For those of you who, you who have the kits, um, you have a brown in there. Now when you base coat the brown, you want to try to make sure all your uh, white spots are covered. Now, if you look closely, you can see that it's not a solid covered, doesn't matter. This is only going to be left as an accent in crevices. As you can see through the green, you see it through the beige. Um, it's there so that you don't have to butt colors right up against each other, which is the hardest thing to do if you wanted to paint each area individually. You're always out of the lines and you know, you're always going back and forth and touching up. So I believe in dry brushing a lot of pieces and base coating if I can. I have a door that's swinging. It's pretty windy here today. Sorry about that noise. Um, okay, so I went ahead and I base coated the brown and I used just a large square nylon brush to put that on and I let it dry. And it's a good idea to let it dry a little bit before you start doing all your dry brushing. Uh, the disadvantage of dry brushing over wet paint is that sometimes it lifts. So uh, you wanna let it dry. Now I have quite a few dry brushes in front of me. If you only have one, Make sure you work from the lighter colors to the darker colors because it's very easy to go from the lighter color to the, you're not gonna be washing your brush at all in between colors. You can't do that. If you have a wet brush, it just doesn't dry brush properly. So you can go from the lighter colors to the um, darker colors very easily. But once you have the green or black or anything dark in your brush, hard to go back to the yellow or the beige. So I'm gonna be starting out with the background of the house. And I always start with the bigger areas in the background. The little areas, I, you, if you got color on the, say the dragonfly, it'll cover. Eventually the little areas will cover. So I believe in doing the uh, bigger areas first. Now, you need paper towels, you need a palette to put your paint in. Um, those of you who have the kits, you have the little pods, you can work out of them. And the proper size dry brush for the area that you're working in. I'm gonna be using this one right now. This is a white dove, nice brush. Okay, so now when you dry brush, first I condition the brush. I pick up just very, very little in the brush and I work it into the hairs of the brush. A lot of people make the mistake, and I pointed this out before, of just doing this. Now you didn't get it out of both sides of the brush. So you wanna work all the paint in, you know, into the hairs of the brush that it's kind of evenly dispersed. Okay, so now I'm gonna pick up again. That was just to condition the brush. And every time you dip for paint, you do the same thing. You don't just do this. You hold the paper down, the paper towel down, and you work your brush back and forth. And you always go opposite the um, detail. So, so well, I'm glad it closed now because now I won't be making any noise anymore. Uh, you go the opposite direction of the detail. If you're getting lines, crisscross it. Now, I don't have to worry if I get it on any other areas right now because it's the background and all the other areas will cover with the other colors. So I just wanna get this bark of the tree house in first. Now some of these brushes, sometimes they shed, mine is shedding a little in the beginning. This is fairly new brush. Okay, see how far I went with that? So I'm gonna pick up again, take it out of the brush. I start very gently with a very light hand. Someone taught a class at my store when I had it many, many, many years ago, and he was teaching dry brushing. And he said he should be able to come over and pull the brush right out of your hand. You're not holding it real tight until you get the feel of how much is in the brush. 
In the beginning, it should be a very, very light uh, hold on that brush, and then you can't press hard. Okay, so I start with one side of the brush, turn it around, use the other side of the brush, and just very, very, very gently, you tickle the surface. I've heard people say it that way. You tickle the surface. Now I see a couple of white spots that I have. If I was gonna use this as my sample, I would go back and I would touch up those white spots. Because when you dry brush, it's the crevices that stay showing. So if you see white spots, you wanna go back and cover them. But you can always do that with a little brush later on. True dry brushing is actually almost seeing powder forming on your table. And you never do just one coat. I'm just laying down the first coat and the first coat doesn't ever look great. It's very light. I'll go around and make sure I get one coat on. And when I finish this, I'm gonna put a little white in my brush to make it a little brighter. See, this color is a lot brighter than this color. Let me straighten this out so you can see that better. See, this color is more tan, and this one I added a little bit of white to it, to the brush. Now, if you make a mistake and you get a glob, no worries. You just go back with your base brush, and you put more brown on it, and you let it dry and go back to it. I tell people when I'm doing a class, it's like sweeping. I don't think too many people sweep anymore. You have these electric things. Okay, but you go back and forth like you're sweeping and you're using the side of the brush and you're not keeping the brush on the surface. You're actually lifting it up. When you get used to it, you do it fast. But if you go like this and you wiggle, you're gonna be going into the crevices. You don't wanna wiggle the brush in the crevices. You want the brush to come up off the surface each time. You get used to it after a while. Now I put the littlest, littlest amount in there and you use nothing. You really use nothing. I'm going to do a second coat without the white, and I want you to see the difference where I just did the top versus over here. It makes a big difference. The second coat really, really makes the color pop, and a third coat even more. And on the third coat, I'm going to pick up a little bit of white in my brush just to make it a little lighter. Now, it doesn't have to be the beige. Um, you have colors you can do your house, whatever color you want. I'm sticking to the colors that I did in this sample so it doesn't confuse people. Okay, so now that's my second coat. I have to go around the back. If you have a lot of dry brushes, uh, you can use them with the different colors in the brush. So if you need to go back and touch up, or at least keep one for light colors and one for dark colors, that, you know, if you finish and then you put it down, you go on to another color, it's hard to go back to the first color in the brush, especially if it's a light color. Now I'm using a combination of paints here. I have Gare's acrylics, they're called their party paints, which right now they're not manufacturing. I think it's because of raw materials. And then I'm using Mako, which I love Mako's colors, but when I'm filling all these pods to make kits and everything, they're a little bit more expensive because they don't come in the pints that Gare comes in, and I prefer these. Um, Mako does make their white and black in the eight ounce, and I'm using those. And I also have some Duncan. So it's whatever I have, I use. Okay, so now I'm gonna be picking up a little bit of white. I still have the tan in the brush and I'm picking up a dot of white, a little bit of white and just blending the two together and highlighting. Now you see that little bit I just did right there? See how much lighter it is? And it's okay if I get it up on the roof, the green is definitely going to cover it. And you can take your time. I always tell everybody this on all my videos. Take your time. Don't rush it like I am. I'm just here to guide you, but you can take your time when you do it. And mine doesn't have to be perfect, but yours should be nice. So take your time. Don't rush it. I mean, you could put some yellow in your brush. You could give it an ivory look. I'm just putting the white in my brush. See the difference in it now? Now I have a lot more white in this one than that one. When you do pieces, two, three, the same item, they never come exactly the same. Dry brushing is great on this piece. It's, it's such a, a great piece to dry brush on. The detail is beautiful. Now I did this one much lighter than this one. I can go back and put a little bit more of the tan in my brush. 
And the tan is the uh, the gear, but you can use Mako's medium portrait. I think that'll work just as well. I'm gonna work some of the white out of my brush, but I keep putting the tan back in my brush. But you get the idea, so I'm not gonna worry about it too much. If it's not exactly the same color, it's okay. Okay, so now I think I'm going to go to the yellow because that's the next lightest color, and I'm gonna put some on the dragonfly. Now front and back, so whatever you do on the front, you do on the back. So you bring it up from the uh, body out, and then we're gonna be doing it on the top of the mushroom. Uh, yellow is one of the hardest colors to cover with. It's not easy to cover with yellow. So I think I'm gonna to go to a different brush and try to put some yellow on with a separate brush. But you can just work. What you do is you clean the previous color out of your brush with the next color. So do it a couple of times. Pick up the yellow, wipe it out. Pick up the yellow, wipe it out. And you'll see on your paper towel how the color is coming out of your brush. So in the beginning, you'll have a lighter yellow and eventually you'll get to the yellow that you're using. So what I do on areas that I want more solid is I pounce it, because yellow is difficult. So I'm pouncing my yellow on, and as you can see, it doesn't give you very solid coverage, the yellow, until you do it quite a few times. Because there's no crevices on the mushroom. So you can't really, you can dry brush a flat area, but it is a lot harder to do. So I make it a little easier for you by pouncing it on. So you have a little mushroom in the back here, Right here, there's a little mushroom underneath and a mushroom on the top. And then there's a, two more mushrooms here in the front. Okay, a little bit, pounce it out. Just remember, every time you dip in paint, do not go to your piece. You go from the paint to the paper towel to your piece. And if you pounce it two or three times, you'll get nice coverage. I'll give that a couple of seconds to dry and I'll go over to the dragonfly and work on the dragonfly. Let me add the yellow. Okay, so when I do the dragonfly, I'm gonna go across because it has crevices. I'm gonna go in both directions, if you can see that. All right, if I go down, I'm gonna be filling in the crevices. I really don't wanna fill the crevices in. So the yellow is covering pretty well on here. And you could bring it up a little bit more than you want because the teal will overlap it. I'm trying to hold this towards you so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, and then like I said, don't forget to do the back. Okay, so then I'm going to go back to the mushrooms. A little more on my brush. Pat it out. If your color is going on and it looks wet, it means that you don't have enough out of your brush. You really need to get that moisture out of your brush on the paper towel. Now the second coat looks a lot better. But you need two, three, four coats on the mushroom. But what you see is what you get. When you like it, you stop. working out of the cap here, so I need to get a little bit more color in my cap. So I need so little, I'm not bothering to put it in the palette. Pick up a little bit more. Now you see these two I did the second time and see the difference? So each time that you do it, and you don't have to get right up to the house. You wanna leave your brown showing in the crevices as if it's an antiquing. It's what separates all your colors. And that's the advantage of dry brushing. You do not have to butt your colors right, right up against each other. And if you get onto the beige part, the next day when your brush is dry, you go back and you touch it up. It's, it's easier to work, I, I think, I work a little faster and then I go back at the end and touch everything up. But you know, everybody works differently. Okay, I'm going back, I'm doing the dragonfly again. Okay, I'll do the back. 
And I have a little too much in my brush this time, but it's on the back and it's a little bit smoother on the back, so it really doesn't matter. And don't forget to get onto the sides. Okay, do I have yellow anywhere else? Is that the dragonfly? No, I don't. So I think now I'll go to the orange. And guess what? I didn't pick up any orange. Well, I have orange here. Okay, I have some orange. And I'm going to use the same brush for the orange. I'm going to do the orange on... I won't do dots until last because once you do dots with the back end of a brush, they stay wet for a long time and then you'll smear them. So you don't want to do that right now. So we're just going to pick up a little bit of orange right in the same brush with the yellow. Okay, and I have orange on the shell of the snail. Like I said, you can change your colors, but I'm doing what I have on here. I did do this class in person at, at a library, two classes, I believe, and everybody chose different colors to use all over, so, it, and they look beautiful. Now, the first coat that I'm doing still has a lot of yellow in my brush, so I'm getting this yellowy orange as compared to the orange that I have on this one. So I'll just keep doing it. Do it a second time. Well, unfortunately, if you don't let it dry, sometimes it lifts. And my color's a little wet right now, but you need to let your colors dry a little bit in between coats. That's why if you have a multiple brushes, it's a good idea you could put this down and then go back to it. So that's what I'm gonna do because it's a little wet right now and it's not really giving me the coverage that I want. So I'm gonna put that brush down. And what will we do next? So there is a little bit of yellow and red and orange on my leaves, but I wanna do the house first, the roof of the, uh, of the birdhouse first. Uh, so I think we'll go to the green next. Yeah, I think we'll do the green next. And I'm using a deep green. It's uh, Gare's dark green. I'll put a little bit of that in the palette because I need quite a bit of that. I'm going to be using, uh, I'm using a bigger brush this time. Straighten myself out over here. Okay, so again, I condition the brush with the green, and then I pick it up. I only do that the first time I load a brush. I always condition it with the color first. Okay, so now I'm going to do the roof. Now, the roof's a little bit more solid. I'm going right over the leaves also, the leaves, the roof. Now, even though I'm um, dry brushing this against the grain, I want a little bit more solid coverage. So I will go in and fill in some of the crevices, but the brown will still show. It may not show as obviously as on the beige, but it will show. For the first time, I'm just gonna go against the grain, like so, the opposite way of the detail. The detail is going vertically, you're going to go horizontally. You want to leave some of that brown showing, especially where the leaves separate here. It's a good idea to keep it showing. Now, I did say that I went back and I filled in a lot more on the green. And the way I do that is I still dry brush against the grain when I first start. Okay, like that. I go against the grain, get most of the color out of my brush, And then right before I dip for more color, I go back and dust some into the crevices because there's way too much brown on here and I wanna have more green on my roof. So when there's less in the brush, I put it on the crevices so that I don't lose the brown completely. Does that make sense? See on this side, I went against the grain. On this side, I went into the crevices somewhat. And then you have that little lip underneath. You should really get at that too. You might need a different brush to get into there. All right, it's a lot of playing back and forth, back and forth. But to me, it's still much easier than trying to paint each area in a different color. That's very hard to do. And get all your leaves, not your top. I think the um, this swirl at the top is part of your vine, so I did that in the green. And then I put a little brown on, darker brown on the top, but you don't, have to worry if the green gets up there because the brown will cover it. Now, if I see too much brown in the crevices, I go back in and I dust it. I don't want a lot of the brown showing. And I didn't even go on the front yet. 
but you can swing around, do the front, and then come back to the back, okay? Always wipe it out. See, my leaves are getting done at the same time, going right over the leaves. And there's a ladybug on there. Don't worry if, if the green gets on it. I'll go right over it. It's a lot easier because I'm going to be doing the ladybug, like I said, with a small brush. I'm going to be painting it on, and the red and the black will cover. You don't have to worry about that. Okay, a little bit more green. The reason that I haven't been posting videos now is because I do these for the library classes since COVID. Um, for the libraries that will not do Zoom and will not do in-person classes. So I do the videos, but now we're all going back to in-person classes, almost every library is. So I, I won't be posting that many videos, but since I've started this, I think I would like to continue doing it because I've made a lot of friends by doing this across the United States and people have ordered from me. And it's just so nice to hear the comments back and forth. So I'll probably do them every once in a while. If you notice, I think most of my videos are smaller pieces for the children. The adult classes, a lot of them were done on Zoom, but the children's classes, um, they don't, I don't think they have the attention span for Zoom. I think I did a Zoom class once with the children. They were cute. They were in their homes and they're going around showing me all different things that they did and it was really cute. But I didn't do that many Zoom classes with children. So they were mostly done on the YouTube videos. But every once in a while, I will still do these videos. I find something that's really interesting or some libraries still wanna do um, videos along with kits. But you never know where we're going anymore with what's going on. So <clears throat> could go back to doing videos and Zoom again. All right, I'm not gonna get as exacting as you should get, but that gives you the general idea of here. Like, let me just get my vine up at the top. And I believe there's a leaf here. Yeah, this is this a leaf. Yeah, this is a leaf up at the top here, right here. This little piece here. I noticed I didn't do the back of this one. See, I go back and even on that one, I'm touching up. All right, so do your vine. And there's a leaf also here, right here, right above the dragonfly. That's why you should do your big areas first because if it gets on the small areas, it's easier to touch them up than to go to the background. Okay, so that now, now what I did is I took a lighter green and I dry brushed over the darker green for shading. You see the difference in the two? And I believe I even used a third coat of green, a different color. So I have that one, and then I have this one, which is Mako's, which is uh, Lime Burst, Lime Burst. And that gives me the little bit of limey color that's in there. So I have three greens on there. They're not completely overlapping the dark green, the next two greens. They're placed on sporadically. So again, we just use the same brush. Do it twice to get the previous color out of your brush. And you can hit edges. You can hit your leaves to make your leaves stand out. That's the, the main thing you want to do. You want your leaves to stand out from the roof. So put the color on your leaves. You can accent the end of your roof and you can put a little bit in your roof. Just a little bit here and there to make it a little bit lighter. This green I might have used on the whole thing and then when I got to the uh, lime burst, I might have just used that for accents on the leaves. And I think I even used the lime burst on there. It's hard to remember. Okay, so I'm gonna pick up a little bit of the lime burst in the brush with the medium green. And the first thing I'm gonna do is, because you always have excess in your brush when you start, is I'm going to hit, there's still too much in here. I'm gonna hit my leaves. Are my leaves there on this side? 
I think this lime burst makes them stand out on the green roof. I mean, you could do your roof in a different color. It doesn't have to be this dark green. Do you see how the lime burst makes them stand out? And then I put a little orange and a little red in them. Let's separate the leaves here. See what I did here? I ran it around the edges of the leaves to separate them. I just play. When you don't have much in your brush, it works. Can you see the leaves there? Now this one is even lighter, but like I said, you can keep playing. I started to do that side a little lighter. And you could, it's your piece. You, you know, you do as much of the greens as you'd like. Now I put too much on there, so I take my finger and I wipe it off. You really have to make sure that you get it out of the brush. I'm trying to do my vines, make them a little bit lighter. Can you see that on there? You just want it to pop. No matter what you use, you just want your colors to, to pop so that it doesn't all look the same green. And that's a leaf there. And I just hit the bottom of the dragonfly, but we'll go over that with another color. And I'm putting this lighter green on my, my um, vines. Okay, so it's not perfect, like I said, but you can keep playing with it. And you get the idea of that now. So from the green... I think now I'll go back and, um, what do I have on the stem here? I have the turquoise. I think I'm going to put the yellow, since I have the brush with the orange in it, I'm going to pick up some orange and put some orange in my leaves. And that's just random. You can hit the bottoms of them. Just blend it. You don't want a big blob or anything on there. See what I did there? I just put a little bit of orange. Remember to do the backs, front and back. Just a little little wispiness, little sweep of color there with nothing, nothing, nothing in your brush. This really has to have nothing in the brush. It's the same brush load I'll do every leaf. Can you see the little bit of orange on the leaves? Okay, and now I'm gonna be picking up a drop of red in the same brush. I'm gonna close some of my paints up so I don't drop them on the floor. Okay. And pick up a little bit of red, same brush. Put it in the brush. I use the same paper towel. I just keep folding it over, turning it inside out. So now I have, I have a little bit of orange in the brush with that red. Okay, so I put a little bit of red in the brush and just put it anywhere on the leaf. You don't want to block out all the green. So you want to see the yellow, you want to see the orange, and you want to see the green on the brush. I have a tendency to blend colors with my fingers sometimes if I don't like the way they look. If it goes on too heavy. Now this one I forgot to put orange on, so I just have red and green on there. No right or wrong. Now I don't put that on the vines or anything. It's only on the leaves. Make it more of a fall look. Okay, so you see how they are on there? A little bit of red and orange. You could put yellow.
yellow in them too if you wanted. But like I said, yellow is one of the hardest colors to dry brush with. I don't think it has enough pigment of color in it or something, but it's hard to do. So um, I never went back and pounced more yellow on my mushrooms, but I think they look okay, so I'm gonna be leaving them. But what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna put some more orange in my brush and try to do, I should have done that before I put the red in my brush, do the snail again. That's okay, it went back to the orange pretty fast. See how fast it went back to the orange? It's a little different orange than I started out with, but it doesn't really matter. So more of a red orange, but like I said, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so that's grass. This is grass back here that I forgot to do. And also there's grass down at the bottom. So if you have the green in another brush, you can put the green on those areas. Did I do this one? Yes, I did. Okay, so you see the grass is here and it's also here on this side and around the front, around the front on this one. The body of the snail is the lime burst. Okay, so I got a little different color on him now, a little brighter color, no right or wrong. But I'm gonna go back to my greens and do the, the grass at the bottom here. piece. At first I thought it was the tail of the snail, but I don't think so. I think it's just the grass. Okay, and I'm going to pick up just a little bit of another the lighter green in the brush and just kind of stipple some over it to make it look like a grass. And just kind of pounced a little bit on there to, over the dark green of the lime. Okay. Okay, so what else is green? I believe that's it on the green. Now we can go back to the uh, the red, and I'm gonna be using the brush that I had the orange in again. I'm gonna pick up the red now. Do it a couple of times to work out the orange. I'm gonna do the door. Okay, so I have the door in the red, and wherever the, um, the gold is gonna go, it's okay. Doesn't really matter. The gold will go right over the top and the gold is painted on. And we can do the ladybug at the same time. You can get a small brush. I think I'm just gonna pounce it on because I have a small dry brushing brush here. Work from the edge in, so if you go this way, you're gonna go over the, the roof they go in all different directions and just pounce it on. Okay, now, if you can't do that, just paint it on with a little brush, but I was able to put the ladybug on with the bigger dry, with the dry brushing brush, and but I'll, I will paint the black on it. Uh, we don't have red anywhere else. I believe that's the only red on the piece, except for some red in your leaves and the red door. I'm gonna do the door a second time. I think it will pop a little bit more. And you are dry brushing, but if it's a little more solid, it's okay. the door we have the door done uh, it goes so fast oh I know what else I did red the window in the back and when you're dry brushing or you're pouncing you can pounce it on the window don't go this way because you'll pull it into the house come down and come into the center from the outside edge into the center and then you won't uh, trail it onto the house itself And if you have the brown good enough on the inside here, you don't have to put the red all the way inside. You get what you can with the brush. If you want to take a small brush and paint it in, you can. You could do anything you'd like, okay? So there's the red on there. This is, you know what this is great with? You put the fairy lights, and what the fairy lights are, those stiff wires that have all the little lights on them. They look great in all of these pieces. They make them like little lanterns. Uh, Gare has made, I, I buy a lot of my bisque from Gare, and they've made 
a lot of lanterns. We do a lot of different lanterns, and I've been suggesting the fairy lights. They are really bright. They look great outside on a patio for a little lighting and everything. They look really great. So if you want to go back and you want to brighten the red on your leaves, you can do that now when you have the red in the brush. Okay, so see how fast this is going? So now I think we'll go to the, the well, you know what? Let's, let's try to do the, since we have green, let's go to that color, that little guy. And then my brush is very, very big, so I'm gonna to have to go to a smaller brush for my green. I'm gonna use the lime. Always condition my brush twice. And I'm gonna pounce the body of the snail. And I think I did his antenna also. That's what they're called. Very gently. If you have a good brush, it has a nice point. And if you notice, I go in and in, I never go onto the piece. I come from the outside of the antenna toward the middle, outside toward the middle. Same thing with his body, outside toward the middle, on both sides. Okay, oh, he's got a whole big body there. So I have to come all the way down like this, huh? Hmm. See, I, I did orange on the whole thing, even his body, and now I'm able to go right over it. Running out of orange in my cap. Why am I doing orange? I need green. <laughs> How silly. I don't even know what I'm doing here. Okay, so back to the to the green. I picked up the wrong color that time. Okay. The green goes on his body here. Okay, so it's not exact like my first one. And if you do a few coats of the green, it'll get brighter and brighter. But I have the green there. Okay. Okay, what are we missing? Oh, the purple. All right, I'm going to use my green brush and go into the purple. Because it's the size that I like. Now, if you find you only have a small amount of dry brushing brushes, just let them dry. Wash them, let them dry and then you can use the same brush over and over again, but you just don't want to use the brush while it's wet because it makes a big, big, big difference. So I'm going to be using my um, green brush for the purple. I'm going to put it in the brush, and you see I haven't had any problem. It went right to purple. See the purple right there? That's only one application of the uh, loading of the brush with the purple. So I did the area around the door in the purple, and again, come from the, away from the house body itself there. Come into the center. Always work away from your color, if you can. And if you wanna do this in a different color, that's fine too. Like I said, the, the, the thing I find the most in teaching dry brushing is that everyone wants to achieve the finished look with one or two applications of the paint. And they put it on too heavy and too wet. And the first coat they'll put on, they'll say, oh, this doesn't look good. No, it doesn't. The first coat does not look good. You have to really, really, really let it dry. And I'm going right over the red where I went out of the lines and the purple covered it right up. Now down here on the bottom, I added white to my brush to make the purple lighter, but you can do that in tan, you could do it in another color, your choice. And I'm not gonna go over everything a million times here, but you can, you can keep doing it until you're satisfied with the color. But you get the idea. So now I have the white, which I just put away Goodness, this is so hard to open. I'm just gonna put a little bit of white out and whatever purple I have in the brush, I'm picking up some white. I'll do it a second time. And then I just did it on the steps. I did the lighter color on the steps. Okay, so 
put it on the bottom. If you want them lighter, you can even go lighter. Put a little more white in your brush. I have so many colors in this brush, I don't know what I'm getting out of it now. Okay, so we did that bottom in the white. So what are we missing? We're missing the teal and the brown, I believe. Um, so now I have Dark Teal by Mako, but other companies make colors very similar. So just use whatever you um, have. If you have the strips that I've made for you, then you should have all these colors. So with the teal, I'm going to turn my paper towel inside out. That's another thing at all the classes. I need more paper towels, and I'm like, just turn it around. I use the same. I go through so many paper towels that I get very penny-wise. Okay, so now I'm going to go into the teal. And do it a couple of times to get the previous color out of my brush. You see on the paper towel the color that you're getting. You see each time I do it, it gets a little brighter. All right, so now I have the teal on the bottom of the mushrooms. And I got a pretty good color. And again, don't go into the mushroom, go away from the mushroom. Go from, away from the roof, the body of the house and go in. That's how you avoid getting it all over. From the outer edge, you come in to the area. Okay, we've got the stem. And now we're gonna be doing the dragonfly, the top of the dragonfly. So I also work against the grain on it the first coat. You can overlap your yellow a little bit. Okay. The first coat doesn't look as bright as the second coat will. I'm going to do the back first. So I did the back and I do the sides. I want the sides to have some color on them also. And now I'm gonna do it again because I need a little bit more color. And this color is even brighter than the first time I dipped because I had other colors in the brush. See the difference in the bottom here versus the top? So if you have color in your brush, you just keep applying the next color and it eventually gets rid of the previous color. Now you could even put some of this in your roof. You could put some of this. Oh, here's another ladybug I missed. So we have two ladybugs on here. I missed that one. Process of elimination after a while of painting, you realize where you've missed and you can always go back. And I could put a little bit more on the stems. Okay. And you keep doing it. If you have a lighter turquoise, you could accent it with a lighter turquoise. I think that's enough on there, though. Uh, the body, what did I do on the body? Oh, I did purple on the body, so now we have to go back to the purple. So, um, I'm going to take my red brush Oh, look at that great color I just got. Now that's red and purple mixed together, and it's fine. I see another leaf here that I, uh, I could use some different colors on. Come in from your edge. Try to avoid getting it on the other areas. And then don't forget the back, this is the back of his tail. Okay, got his body done. And that's just the red and the purple together in the brush, and it looks great. And now, because I've forgot to do that little red, the second ladybug, I'm gonna be putting a little bit of the red on there with a small brush.
I'm going to put a little bit more on my other one because dry brushing it on, you don't get the full coverage. So I did my two ladybugs. And for that, I need water. You don't ever let your paint lay in the brush when you're using a regular brush to paint. You must wash it immediately because as fast as the colors dry on the piece, they dry in the hairs of your brush and it will ruin your good brushes. Dry brushing brushes are meant to take the abuse. Um, I don't like to let, let the paint sit in them for too long a time either, but while you're working with them, it's keeping them wet with the moisture from the paint. So you don't have to wash them right away. Like this one I used in the beginning, it's starting to stiffen up. So I will get those in water uh, pretty soon. I see that I missed along this edge here around the door. Now this color is a little bit different because I have the red in it. So I'll go over the whole area. And it also accents it too. It doesn't have to be exactly the same color. Okay, so that the purple around the door now has a little bit of red in the brush. Cute, cool. Okay, so the only thing I think we're missing is the black, the brown. I gave you a little bit of brown. And I'll do that on the stem on the top. I just highlighted with a little bit dark brown. And I'm going to use my beige brush to do that because it's in the same family. And that I dry brush across the grain. I think the brown I gave you is a little darker than this one. And don't forget, I also have beige in my brush, so I'm not getting it as dark as I would like it. But you get the idea, okay? So that's the brown on the stem. So I'm, I'm avoiding the dots until the last thing that we do. Now, I also have dots on the dragonfly. I think they're in the orange, right? And then I have teal dots on the snail and orange dots on the yellow. <clears throat> like I said, you can, you can change it up. But what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to do the black on the um, ladybugs. The two little ladybugs. And I use a tiny little brush that I have here. And do their heads. And when you paint it on, even though you're not dry brushing it on, you still don't have to go right to the edge. You can still leave some of the colors around it that it's not perfectly to the edge. I let the green show a little bit more than I would if I was painting this in solid, you know, just painting and not dry brushing the piece. When you're dry brushing, you can leave the colors, you know, you don't have to butt your colors right up against each other. And I did a little line down the body. I'm going to use, now this is something that I do when I do little lines or I'm doing lashes. Um, I put a little water in my brush, and because it's such a little brush, it gives you a little bit of water in with your paint, and then you roll it to a nice point, pull it to a point. If you have a good brush, you can just pull it to a point, but the little bit of water in the brush makes the paint flow a little bit better on there. Now, if you could see that little line that I just did in there. Did I do it in that one? Yeah, in that one up there. And I don't even have to dip again. I'll just do it in this one. And then I put a couple of dots on the red. You can do it with a toothpick. You can, if you have a very fine brush, you can just use the point of the brush to do a couple of dots. Okay, see the little dots on the two ladybugs? Okay. And then the other thing we're going to do is, I'm, I'm avoiding the dots until the last minute. So the other thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the gold and do the doorknob. I'm going to cover up my paints because I have so many paints open here that I know what will happen. I will uh, dump them over. Okay, I know what I forgot. Little dots in his eyes. The snail's eyes. There's two little dots. And again, you can do that with a toothpick. Mine is so, so tiny. I did it with the point of a very small brush. Don't ever bang your brush in the bottom of a bowl. Swish it and let it hang out until you can get to the sink and wash it. All right, so I'm going to cover up the black. 
I have teal dots, so I'm going to need a little bit more of the teal to do dots. But I'm going to do the gold first. Take my small brush and the gold I'm painting on the hinges on the door. There's two hinges. And then I also did it on the doorknob just to make it stand out. You could use the black on it. You could use the gold on it. Just take your time doing it so that you have nice lines. And if you do go out of the lines, you can go around it with the red and put the red back on or whatever color you have on there. Okay. You could paint the back of the doorknob in, in black and then just do the gold knob. I did gold on the whole thing. And the hinges. Gold really makes it pop. Okay, so where are we now? I think we have everything done, except the dots. I'm pretty sure. Okay, so the dots are done either with the back end of a brush. Okay, this, this one, did I use this brush? No, I didn't, so it's just these. All right, so with the back end of a brush, I'm gonna be using this one. I'm gonna do the teal, and if you don't know the size of your dot, Take a brush and practice on a piece of paper first and see the dots you're getting. And just remember, if you don't dip for every dot that you do, the dots will be different sizes. They will graduate down in size. So I dip and I dot and I dip and I dot and keep them apart from each other. You don't want you know them right on top of each other. I have like a good half an inch in between each one. See, I'm dipping for every one. And then I'll go around and do a couple more. And they could be various colors. I mean, it doesn't have to all be the same color. Okay. See that? Now just remember, they will smear very easily. They take a while to dry because your paint is accumulating a lot heavier on there. And then I did, um, I did orange dots on the mushrooms. You could do teal dots, you could do orange, you could do yellow, well not yellow, the mushrooms are yellow. And I'll do orange dots. Now I try to stay on the dots that are there, if they're obvious and you can see them. What happens when you pour a mold though, they do get worn out after a while and some of the dots are not as obvious as they were when I first got the mold brand new. But I have to say that this uh, mold really held up really well. The detail is still good and I've poured quite a few of them. But you see here, there's, there's no dots on this one, on this side, so I'm gonna go and I'm gonna put a little a few more dots. And don't forget your little guy on the back. And I did two little dots on him in the back. See, on the back, on the bottom there, I did a couple, and I added a couple of extras. Uh, the only other thing I did do on this, I believe I put some glitter. And the glitter that I use is my favorite, favorite glitter, and it's Duncan's Sparklers Brush on Glitter SG880 Crystal. And you can buy that on um, many sites that sell Duncan paint. I believe Amazon even has it, but they're very expensive, Amazon, for any of these things. And I don't do the whole thing. I just did it on the leaves, and I did it on the stem, and I did it on the dragonfly. You could put it on the mushroom, you could put it on the snail. Oh, I did it around the door. So you pick and choose the areas. I didn't want the whole thing glittered, but if that's what you like, you can do that. So it's just, uh, it's a sealer, I believe, and the glitter is dispersed uh, in the sealer. So when you paint it on, it goes on white and it dries clear. Don't glob it on. You don't want it to turn white. Shake well, self-sealing, so it is a sealer. And it's water-based, so you wash your brush with water. I'll do a little bit so you can see. Mm, what brush am I going to use? I'll use this one. Okay, I'll do some on my leaves. So it goes on kind of white, but I pull it out. I don't put it on really, really, really heavy. I just put it on that leaf right there. Going around and putting it on all my leaves. 
trees. I like the leaves to stand out from the house even more. Okay, so I have it on the front. You can see they're a little bit shiny right now, and when they dry, you see more of the glitter. So, uh, like I said, I did around the door, I did the leaves, I did a little bit on the stems, and they're pretty similar. Okay, and look how fast it went. It really took me less than an hour to do that after I base coated. The base coating maybe took me 10 minutes. So it's, it's a pretty fast piece if you lay out all your colors and you have everything ready for you. It's like when you bake. If you have everything in front of you, it's a lot easier than running for each ingredient as you're baking. So if you lay everything out, have everything in front of you, I have all my paints here. I have like all these big jars and little jars. A lot of colors I used on this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 10, 11, 12, 13. I have 14 colors that I used on this, besides the brown, which is 15 colors. So I used a lot of different colors on this. There are a lot of different areas to paint. If you have any questions after this video, you can send me a message right here on YouTube and I'll get back to you as soon as I see your message. Um, I, I think that's it. I think that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much, especially all of you at the libraries who have always purchased these kits uh, from me. And um, have a great summer. Thank you.